we continue our journey together uh, concerning those uh, uh, principles of faith that I uh, learned from um, my time with the Indian community and in the Oklahoma Indian Missionary Conference of the United Methodist Church. This week, I begin with the story of a meeting in our home with the United Methodist leadership in Oklahoma. Uh, both uh, Oklahoma Indian Missionary Conference and the Oklahoma Conference. It was 24 hours after the tornado had ripped through Moore, Oklahoma. At that time, the highest measured intensity tornado on record anywhere. We spent several hours that evening in conversation of how we could best bring the resources of, of the United Methodist Church uh, in ministry to this event. On the surface, uh, everyone was pleased. It was engaging, empathetic conversation throughout the evening. At the end of the evening, Karen and I stood with two leaders from both conferences. To my amazement, there was quick consensus. It's not going to work. Our hopes of working together was not going to work. The best made plans could not be executed as we had hoped. Why? That's the question. Well-intentional, faithful people from both conferences who on their own way would do sacrificial work, but their own way is what made the difference. You see, the way for the Oklahoma conference was the motivation to restore the victims of the tornado to the good life they had experienced prior to the tornado. Rebuild, restore, lend a helping hand towards a good life to be lived again. The way for the Indian community was a foundational understanding of life that life is tragic. The motivation and response to the tragedy of the tornado was to walk the journey with persons um, in responding to the terrible tornadic event. The good life could not be restored for tragedy changing lives. Oh, to be sure, a house could be rebuilt, but lives could not be restored, for lives are changed forever as a consequence of the tragedies that occur. Indeed, the life before the tornado could not be restored for lives were changed. A radical difference meant that the two conferences worked alongside each other for a couple of years, both serving in their own way, but not together in motivation. Why? Because the motivation for serving to restore the good life and the motivation of responding to the life-changing tragedy was so different. You, you know how it happens. Let's get to work. That's different than let's sit down and we want to listen to your pain to your stories of grief, to your stories of resentment. Share your pain, share your stories. As long as it takes, we'll listen. And whoever we need to be with you, we will be. 
you see the basic understanding that life is tragic encompasses all of life, including death. Death is tragic. Radical separation takes place. The journey of life is composed of how we respond to tragedy. This encompasses the belief that the Great Spirit does not cause tragedies of life, but the Great Spirit is on the side of human beings responding to life as tragic. In the aftermath of the tornado, the governor of Oklahoma publicly referred to the tornado as an act of God. Who quickly, publicly responded to the governor by saying, no, 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 God did not cause the tornado. God is on our side being the, the force of love, helping us to respond to the tragedy of the tornado. Who spoke publicly to the words of the governor? The Indian community of which I was a part. Oh, what a learning for me. It confirmed for me that being must precede doing. For doing to be understood and accepted, being must be experienced. It confirmed for me that faith is not inseparably linked to the good life. It confirmed for me that the presence of the divine is not causing events to happen, but the presence of the divine is sympathetic and sacrificial love helping humans to respond to the tragedies of life. It confirmed for me that first responders not only have things to do, but also persons to be, be present. And that begins with listening. Yeah, I learned from the faith community of the Indian community the understanding that life is tragic and that the divine, the great spirit is on the side of humanity, is on our side as we respond to the tragedies of life with faith, in love, undergirded by hope that the good life, not that the good life can be restored, achieved, but that in whatever way we experience the tragedies of life, the divine presence of love is sustaining, strength giving, always new, always fulfilling. You see, this understanding of life works for the permanently poor as well as the privileged affluent. The experience of the good life is not faith related. What all humans have in common and what makes all humans equal is that human life is tragic. And the divine is on our side of responding to the tragedies of life in agape love. Let me say that once more. What all humans have in common and what makes all humans equal, the privileged affluent, and the permanently poor is that human life is tragic 
and the divine is on our side of responding to the tragedies of life in agape love. Again, a lot to think about. Following are some thought starters. What's your response to the basic understanding that life is tragic? What is your response to separating faith from the good life? What is your response to the divine God and the great spirit being on the human side of responding to tragedy with love rather than causing the tragedy to happen. Thank you for being a part of our time together.